Hi, I'm Carly Strasser, and I'm coming to you from San Francisco, California. I'd like to thank the organizers of this meeting for inviting me to speak about um, creating, uh, supporting the creators and maintainers of Essentials open source software for science. I am the program manager for open science at the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, and we're based out of San Francisco, California. If you're not familiar with the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, we're a relatively new foundation. We are about five years old and we have several different areas of focus, but the work that I do is housed in the CZI science program. And our goal is to support science and technology that will make it possible to cure, prevent, or manage all disease by the end of the century. Within the CZI science program, I'm part of the open science group and our focus is the universal and immediate open sharing of all scientific knowledge and outputs by the end of the century. To accomplish that mission, we have five main areas that we focus on. The first is support for tools and resources for research. Uh, the second is funding education and capacity building groups to enable open science best practices. We also focus on metrics and incentives for open science. And we support platforms for sharing data methods and other outputs, most uh, recognizably preprints. And finally, we fund uh, improving infrastructure and integration to enable better open science. I'm going to focus on this first uh, item, which is support for tools and research resources for research. In 2019, there was a paper that came out um, shortly after the Event Horizon announcement, which was a big science announcement that happened um, a few years back. And uh, this article was telling the story of the folks that were working on the Event Horizon project and uh, their efforts to get funding to support open source software that they used in the course of that work. And the quote was just five days after the announcement, the NSF rejected a grant proposal to support the scientific Python ecosystem, saying that it lacked sufficient impact. And uh, this is particularly interesting because a lot of the scientific Python that is used is um, highly, highly impactful if you're thinking about things in terms of dependencies. So software that depends on a package like matplotlib, uh, there are around 345,000 plus different projects that rely on that software. And I would say that that's a pretty good measure of its impact. However, that's not how groups like the National Science Foundation and many funders perceive how we can be measuring impact. There was a more recent article that came out about um, the lack of investment in digital re research infrastructure. And there was a great, great quote in this um, Nature article, which uh, was re recommending that uh, we fund, maintain, and have viable career paths, even if researchers involved are writing more lines of computer code than lines in an academic manuscript. That it was really important to support the ecosystem of research software to ensure that we continue to have ongoing uh, good software that we can build our science on. So enter the Essential Open Source Software for Science project. This is our flagship uh, project that we fund within the open source, or sorry, within the open science program at CZI. And the thinking behind this uh, program, uh, it was born a couple of years ago, and it was uh, really in recognition of the fact that the majority of open source software for science is undervalued and it lacks funding for maintenance, growth, development, and community engagement, especially after the initial phase when it's linked to the original research. So enter the EOSS program. Uh, the objective is to support software maintenance, growth, development, and community engagement for critical open source tools. And this is really a nod to recognizing that we need to ensure that the maintainers and contributors to these projects um, both have their contributions be visible and recognized within the science communities. Uh, we also need to support unmet, un the unmet needs in maintenance, community building, and DEI, and make these things more fundable by other funders as well. This is a uh, snapshot of the different projects that we fund through the Essential Open Source Software for Science program. I'm sure you're recognizing a few names here. And these span uh, discipline specific all the way to general foundational tools in uh, research software. And um, these were all funded over the course of four rounds of requests for applications. And those four rounds of funding for these projects has ended in around $23, $23 million in investment in open source software. 
what you're seeing now is a breakdown of the um, proposals that we funded in the various domains, so neuroscience, imaging, genomics, et cetera, as well as in italics, there's three buckets of proposals that we funded that we think of as more foundational. So they focus on visualization, machine learning and data analysis, and data management and workflows. So you can see that we have um, a pretty wide swath of investments across these different areas, um, across the four, uh, the four requests for applications, EOSS one through four. And um, we are uh, particularly interested in uh, imaging this most recent round because we did have some supplemental imaging funding from our imaging community uh, within CZI to um, amplify the projects that came into the request for applications that reflected imaging tools. In addition to the main EOSS projects that we fund, we most recently announced our EOSS Diversity and Inclusion Supplemental Grant Program. This is a nod to the fact that many of these software, uh, software suites and projects are run and maintained primarily by um, Western males. And so the goal here was to build participation, retention, and leadership progression for contributors from, under, from underrepresented groups in scientific open source software. And the way that we went about doing this, this was to fund diversity and inclusion interventions in select EOSS projects. So from that slide with all those different names of projects, we invited all current and former EOSS grantees to apply for funding to support a variety of interventions. And these included things like internships, mentoring programs, workshops. Um, we asked them to specify what areas of underrepresentation they were targeting. And we got a broad range of dimensions, including gender, ethnicity, race, geographic location, and accessibility. And then finally, we encouraged those EOSS groups to partner between open source maintainers and then partner with those leading organizations in the DEI space. So groups that are already working in this space and have ideas on how we can improve uh, representation. So in this program, we received 25 letters of intent, and that resulted in 14 proposals being funded for a total of $5 million. These are three examples of the types of projects we funded for the supplemental grant program. Chime 2 is a software platform for microbiome analysis, and they're uh, using it as an on-ramp to help Native American students um, learn more about scientific computing. And they partnered with groups at the um, institution in their house, which is um, Northern Arizona University. Common workflow language is a standard for biomedical analysis workflows, and they use the funds to hire a community engineer who also partners with um, uh, mentoring, internships, updates, and, and provides updates to code and documentation. And um, the partner that they're working with is Outreachy, which is an internship program that uh, provides paid internships to underrepresented groups. And then finally, UCSC, UCSC Zena, uh, which is a visual exploration resource, and they are partnering with the UC Santa Cruz Genomics Institute Research Mentoring Internship Program to establish an internship program for underrepresented groups to work with UCSC's Xena tool. So with that, I'll wrap up and leave it to the rest of the panelists. Thank you for giving me your time and attention. If you're interested in the EOSS project, we will have future calls for proposals, probably not in the next 12 months, um, but keep an eye out at chanzuckerberg.com slash EOSS. We also have general information about the Open Science Program and some of the other things that we fund at the URL there. And you can always reach out to us through um, the general email, openscience at chanzuckerberg.com. Thank you so much.